Welcome to Adobe Photoshop. As you can see, this is the latest version available on the Adobe Creative Cloud. Updates to the software are free each year for those who have a subscription to the Adobe Creative Cloud. For those students who do not have an Adobe subscription, I get asked this question a lot. Can I use older versions of the software for this class? And my short answer is absolutely. There is no reason that having software that's a little older should stop you from creating wonderful design work and projects. The next few lessons of this course are for those who are brand new to Photoshop, or maybe you've only opened it a few times and played around with it, are those who want to start at the very basic level. For those already a little comfortable with the basic interface and tools of Photoshop, feel free to move through these lessons quickly or skip them. There are going to be some really awesome up-to-date tools that may not be available to you if you have older versions, and I'll try to mention those throughout this course, what those tools might be. All versions of Photoshop have the same basic elements, so let's go ahead and get started by opening up a new document and learning those basic tools. We are in Adobe Photoshop, and I had some lessons here last year, and I wanted to take a moment to take some student feedback and rework the whole first hour of the Photoshop section, because I wanted to make sure I went slow enough for those who have never been in Adobe Photoshop before. So we're gonna spend a few extra lessons, a few extra minutes, talking about some very vital tools like how layers work, how the type tool works, and just getting more familiar with the overall workspace. If you're brand new to Adobe Photoshop, I highly encourage you to watch the next couple lessons as we set up our workspace. So here we are at the very beginning home screen. We're gonna go ahead and open up a basic document and get started getting to know some of the tools. So I'm gonna go down to Create New just going to click on create new document and you're going to always have this new document box pop up and it's going to be able to give you a chance to input the sizes. You can do inches, pixels, centimeters, millimeters. There's a lot of different measurements you can use depending on where you are in the world. I'm in the United States. I use inches a lot for printed documents and I use pixels for digital documents. So let's just say, for example, I'm just going to do a little social media post. That's a digital graphic. I want to do that in pixels. And I am going to do 1080 and width and 1080 and height. So just putting in my basic dimensions. You can change your orientation to landscape or portrait size, but in this case, it's the same size. So it's just going to be a square format. And you can input your resolution, which really matters a lot more when you do printed documents. You want to always kind of have a nice 300 resolution for anything that's going to end up being printed. Um, since this is a digital document, what matters the most is the pixel sizes and making sure that they're appropriate sizes, depending on where you're going to post it. And everywhere you post, there's going to be different pixel requirements. There's also color mode, and we're going to stick with RGB, which is going to be great for digital, as we learned in the design theory lessons, and CMYK is great for print. So we're not going to really worry about bitmap or grayscale right now. We're just going to do RGB color. You can start off with a transparent background, so nothing on your canvas at all. I like to start off with a white background because sometimes I like to just go ahead and have a background set. It's really up to you. Default is white, so we're just going to keep it on white. Okay, we're not going to worry about any of the advanced options, so we're just going to go ahead and click Create. So now we have a document that is 1080 by 1080 pixels in size, so perfect for a quick little Instagram post. So the focus of this course is graphic design, graphic design projects. And so when I'm teaching Photoshop, it's going to be a little bit different if you're going to take a tutorial learning Photoshop for photographers or learning Photoshop for web designers. This is going to be have a heavy focus on graphic design tools and the type of work that you're going to do as a graphic designer. So we're, there's so many tools to Adobe Photoshop. You're not going to be able to learn all of them in a month or all of them sometimes even a year. I'm still learning new tools and I've been in Photoshop for over 20 years. They're constantly coming out with new updates. What we're going to focus on in this course is specifically graphic design tools and things I use very often in uh, graphic design projects. There's been a lot of things that have changed over the last couple years, but Photoshop has really stayed, all the basics have really stayed the same. Um, so as you're working through this, you may have 
some different options or maybe it's configured a little bit differently, but overall the basic stuff, tools and windows are in the same place. So what we're gonna do is kind of get used to the overall format of Adobe Photoshop. On the left, you have your toolbar right down the side, just kind of your basic tools. There's the brush tools. This is how you get your type tool. Uh, you have your shape tools where you can build shapes. This is your basic building block tools to create things on your canvas. And up at the top, you'll notice even more options. And we're gonna go over this, especially when we do photo editing, you're gonna have a lot of your adjustments, you know, changing the brightness, the saturation, the exposure, the vibrance of a photo uh, will be done in some of these top options. There's also select options. There's filters that you can apply. A lot of the filters that you see in Photoshop is accessed in this top menu system. There's all sorts of other extra stuff as well, like 3D and, and plugins. And then over to the right, you have your panel system. This is where you're gonna be able to kind of change a lot of the settings on the tools, change the color of a lot of eye objects. This is by default, this is a default workspace, and I'll show you kind of how to get um, yours to match mine, although you don't have to match mine completely. Uh, once you get comfortable with customizing your right panels, you'll be able to, to get what you like to have out there, and you don't have to match my settings. So these are little panels that can be dragged out and you can put these close to your document so you can be very close to certain options and settings with your panels. And these can drag right back and click right into here and you can customize this any way you want. You can put, you can even create a new window. Let's say you wanna have all your color options in one, which is by default, I have my swatches, gradients and color all in one nice handy panel. Let's say I wanna take patterns and I wanna drag patterns down to here. You just kind of drag and click and you'll be able to pop it right in there. And if you wanna take it out, you just drag it out and press the X if you don't want that panel open anymore. So let's say I have color. This is a very important panel to have. Let's say I accidentally, when I'm customizing it, I click off and I go, oh no, I lost color. Where's my color? It's gone. I press the X close key and I, I can't I, I can't open it again. What you could do is you can go up to window at the very top. You'll be able to load all the panel options here. So let's go down to color, click on color, and there it is. It's back again. I can drag it back in place. If I ever open a panel that you don't see on the right side, simply go to window and you'll be able to adjust and add any of the windows or panels that I'm talking about. So let's say I'm talking about brushes and for some reason it's not open. Just click on brushes and then you can have all these brush options that can be added. There's also this extra overflow extendable little toolbar here that you can expand. You click on these little double arrows. It's kind of an extra toolbar. So let's say I wanna have something that's really important. Um, you could just drag color in here and you can access color here and it can fly out of that panel. So it's kind of an overflow. If you run out of room over here on the main panels, you could have kind of this overflow option and you could just drag it right back. It's fully customizable. So let's talk about getting a default workspace. Some of you guys might have been playing around in Photoshop. You rearranged windows. You're kind of like, what are, what's kind of a good basic default setting for me to get back to normal? And there's something called workspaces that you can load, which will load different kinds of panels according to what you're doing. If you go up to window and you go down to workspace, you'll see several different workspaces uh, loaded. So if you're doing a 3D workspace, load that. If you're doing painting, digital painting, or if you're doing photo editing, and then graphic and web. I kind of like to stick to the default and customize it. So that's what we're gonna do, is we're gonna just make sure it's set on essentials. And if it's already on essentials, you can go all the way down here to reset essentials. It'll bring it back to the default space. So let me just click on Reset Essentials. It's gonna bring all my panels back to the default Essentials workspace. And you can change that workspace at any time. You can even save your workspace. So I can go to Workspace down here and let's say I have it perfect. I've spent 30 minutes customizing it and adding the panels that I like. Um, I can always save it by going to New Workspace and doing My Workspace. And you can even save toolbar settings and we'll get to that a little bit later. So now I can go up and load my workspace. 
But I'm going to go to uh, back to essentials just so we kind of have similar looking screens. Doesn't have to match exactly. So I'm just going to reset essentials. And so there's some really important stuff. We'll go over this one panel at a time. There's layers. Layers are going to be a big deal in Adobe Photoshop. It's what makes Photoshop Photoshop is being able to uh, arrange different layers so certain items are on top of others. If you ever need to change any preferences, uh, you can go up to Photoshop up here at the top, go to Preferences, click on General, and it's going to load a lot of different default options. And I just want to take just a minute or two to show you what I have. You don't have to match mine. You're going to develop your own preferences for things as you get comfortable with the software. So you can change the color of the interface. You can make it white if that appeals a little bit more to you, or you can make it black, uh, which can show up really good if you're working on really light documents. And then if you're working on really dark documents, sometimes having a white uh, workspace works really well. I kind of like the in-between darker gray. I just, that's the default. And I just feel comfortable with that. But whatever you would like, this is where you would kind of change those settings. Everything else I'm leaving as default, however I opened it up. 